It is now 10.15, and it is now time for member statements, and I recognize a member from Timmins. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. In all of our communities across Ontario, drugs are becoming more and more of a problem, especially opioids. Uh, we are seeing a fast rise in usage of opioids in our communities. We are seeing more deaths now than we've seen even a year ago. Part of it is what's going on in this pandemic, I think, is adding to all of this. And people are struggling to figure out how to respond to this really, really serious problem that we have in our community. In Timmins, we've lost far too many people to the use of opioids, and everybody is struggling to figure out what to do. Well, I want to give a shout out to an organization that has sort of come out of the grassroots. It's an organization called No More, and they've been out there trying to bring attention to the issue of opioids and how we need to pull people together and not try to divide them apart when it comes to being able to respond to what is this problem. There is hope. The city of Timmins, uh, we've managed to pull together all of our service providers, and we're doing a better job today than we did six months ago of being able to respond to the crisis by making sure that we have more safe beds, by making sure that we have more people on the streets in order to deal with the homeless and those who are affected by opioids and other type of drugs. But No More is an organization that we should encourage because their s simple concept is we need to work together. We cannot divide each other if we're going to be able to conquer what's going on in our communities. Thank you very much. Further member statements? The member from Mississauga, Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As per Ontario's Trillium Gift of Life Network, each organ donation can save up to eight lives and enhance up to 75 more through organ donation, uh, through tissue donation. My apologies, Mr. Speaker. Thanks to Amar Karma, a not-for-profit organization from Mississauga Malton that has been working tirelessly to raise awareness on organ donation for over a decade. Unfortunately, still, there are over 1,600 Ontarians on the wait list for organ transplant, and every three days, someone on that list dies of a preventable death. With a heavy heart, Mr. Speaker, I remind members of a recent tragedy. On November 7, Dante Sebastian Andretta from Brampton, an innocent 12-year-old boy, was hit by a stray bullet and died in a hospital four days later. Mr. Speaker, Dante lost his life, but Dante created a legacy that will live on forever. Through organ donation, Dante has gone on to save nine lives at a tender age of 12 years, who will live their life to the fullest. Dante's heroic legacy and generosity should be a message to 65% of Ontarians that have not registered their consent for organ donation. In Mississauga alone, Mr. Speaker, the registration is only 22 percent. I urge everyone, please register your consent at bdonor.ca. Your deed will live. On, uh, with less people going to service Ontario, Ontario numbers are further down. Please take two minutes. Spend those two minutes, and you can help others. You can save lives. Let's spread the word and save the lives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. <laughs> member statements. The member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak on one of the most pressing issues in our province, the crisis in long-term care system. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, there's been a total of 2,150 deaths of residents in long-term care, as well as eight dedicated, hardworking staff. It's a tragic reality of how broken our system is in Ontario. Right here in Niagara, we've seen tragedy in long-term care under COVID-19. Recently, there has been outbreaks at Gilmore Lodge, Millennium Trail Manor, Meadows of Dorchester, Bell Bell's Senior Home. Right now, Meadows of Dorchester has been dealing with an outbreak and are facing even more positive cases. We've seen a total of 25 COVID-19 cases between residents and staff in this home. Before they were taken over by Niagara Health, we had heard horrible conditions in Men Men Millennium Trail Manor. The home was understaffed, and the staff were forced to reuse PPE that hadn't been properly cleaned. People died as a result of corporate and government mismanagement. People died because of neglect like this. We've seen this happen too many times in Niagara since March. We can't continue to let this happen. At the end of the day, seniors are being neglected, and we're not doing enough. Seniors are dying. There are things we can do right now to make this situation better. Mandate 
four hours of hands-on care, provide the funding to support it, and hire the staff necessary for this, move away from profit care providers, and provide a framework for caregiver visitation in our care home. 68 seniors have died in Niagara. We can't wait any longer. We need to protect our seniors now, our parents, our grandparents, our aunts, our uncles. Thank you. I'm going to remind the members that member statements are to be 90 seconds. I try to provide a bit of leniency if uh, need be, but we, we can't uh, go too far over that, obviously. Um, the next member statement, the member for Garborough Agent Court. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. It was a great pleasure to join my Scarborough colleagues last Friday, November 20th, to make a major announcement to improve the healthcare system in Scarborough. The Scarborough Health Network received $11.8 million to create 45 new beds and eight additional critical care beds in order to help alleviate hospital capacity pressure and reduce wait times. In light of the recent news of spread of the pandemic, this was a welcome news to both the residents and frontline healthcare providers of Scarborough. The staff and the frontline care providers have been doing an outstanding job in trying to control the spread of the pandemic under very challenging conditions. They have been the true heroes of the pandemic in the Scarborough and have gone beyond the call of duty by supporting our most vulnerable in long-term care facilities, as well as other seniors' communities. This investment will help reduce surgical backlog and improve case access to care during COVID-19 pandemic. This brings the total investment to $351 million for more than 2,250 new beds at 57 hospitals and alternate health facilities across the province. Beds that will add more capacity for hospitals, help with occupancy pressure, and support the continuation of surgeries and procedures. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member for St. Catharines. Thank you, Speaker. 16 days of activism against gender-based violence starts today. UN calls it a fight against the shadow pandemic of violence against women during the COVID-19 pandemic. Headline after headline highlights the increase in domestic violence during this pandemic. In St. Catharines, we have Jillian's Place at the vanguard of the fight, an incredible women's shelter. The individual stories from Jillian's Place are empowering. So many women do not know what they would do with without the access of counsel and their support. From helping young mothers that are expecting a new baby, developing skills or cooking, shopping, or learning how to have a healthy relationship in the future. In fact, this year, without the government's funding, they opened up 10 transitional homes across Niagara. I want to celebrate what they have done. It would be a missed opportunity if I didn't point out that it is harder right now for women and the work this organization is during, doing, doing this pandemic. Women are disproportionately affected by the pandemic in St. Catharines. So remember your sisters, remember your mother, your neighbours, your colleagues right now more than ever. There are women in your life struggling, isolating at the risk. Continue to remember them and reach out to them. Continue to support great organizations like Jillian's Place and the great work they are doing during the shadow pandemic. Join me today. Text Courage for 1010. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I want to recognize and applaud an individual today for his courage, convictions, and resolve. Yesterday, Adam Skelly opened his restaurant, Adamson's Barbecue, and is testing the government's unlawful orders. I have no doubt, indeed, I'm certain, that these unlawful orders will be struck down by the courts. I encourage all restaurants, all businesses, and all people to do the same and to stand with Adam Skelly. In recognition, I believe the following poem by Charles McKay is, a, is appropriate. You have no enemies, you say? Alas, my friend, the boast is poor. He who is mingled in the fray of duty that the brave endure must have made foes. If you have none, small is the work that you have done. You have hit no traitor on the hip, 
You've dashed no cup from perjured lip. You've never turned the wrong to right. You've been a coward in the fight. I will be sharing Mr. Skelly's spirit as well tomorrow. I will be testing the laws once again on the front lawn of the Legislature and invite everyone to join me at our No More Lockdowns Pots and Pans rally. Thank you, Speaker. The next member statement, the member for Willowdale. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. It's my privilege to rise today to recognize the passion, strength, and resilience of a remarkable young entrepreneur in my community of Willowdale named Taylor Lindsay Noel. At only 14 years old, Speaker, Taylor was an elite gymnast on track to represent Canada at the 2012 Olympic Games before a tragic neck injury during training left her paralyzed from the neck down. Taylor's promising career as a gymnast was over, but with a heroic determination and with the support of her family, Taylor didn't let her injury define her, Speaker. In 2018, as a new Ryerson University graduate, Taylor founded a home-based organic loose-leaf tea company called Cup of Tay. Wow. Taylor taught herself how to run a business and with only her laptop, Google, a handful of YouTube videos, and her entrepreneurial spirit, she launched her store online. Last month, Taylor yet again received life-changing news, Speaker. This time because her once fledgling tea company had been chosen to receive a massive global boost by being included on, on the list of Oprah Winfrey's favorite oh, wow. things in the upcoming December issue of O Magazine. Just in time for the holidays, no less. Speaker, from the tragic end of her gymnastics career to her extraordinary newfound success in business, Taylor's story is one of grit and resolve. And as we all face the challenges of this pandemic, Taylor's story should inspire us all, remind us that hard work, passion, perseverance, and the support of friends and family is paramount, and that good things can come from even the biggest of tragedies. Taylor, you're an inspiration. Go get them out there. I can't to see what you do next. Thank you very much. Member statements? Member for Nickelbell. Uh, thank you, Speaker. This morning, the Auditor General tabled her report on the preparedness and management of the COVID-19 response. Uh, my comments this morning are not to blame. We cannot change the past, but we can influence the futures to do better. Some of the things that we learn is that um, Ontario is not using the command and control model, which is uh, what our emergency system is based on. Instead, all of the decisions regarding COVID are made by the Premier, his chief of staff, and cabinet. We also know that many of the uh, uh, advice that has been given by public health was not followed. Uh, uh, for example, to expand the COVID-19 testing to any individual with no symptoms and no known exposure uh, was not recommended by public health, yet was put in in Ontario and was not stopped till September, when uh, requiring visitors to long-term care home to be tested for COVID-19 every two weeks and prior to visiting, there is no public health uh, recommendations to do this. Public health says that it gives people a false sense of security. Same thing with the introduction of the new provincial color-coded COVID response framework. This is not based on public health advice. Speaker, it is important for our chief medical officer of health to be an independent officer of the Legislative Assembly. The sooner the better. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Haldeman Norfolk. Mr. Speaker, the uh, Mackenzie Meadows occupation in Caledonia, <clears throat> led by area protesters and outside activists, has been underway for more than 123 days, preventing construction of a housing development project in Haldeman County. There have been significant impacts to residents, businesses, and critical infrastructure. The home builder, Foxgate Homes, has been granted a permanent injunction against the protesters. Haldeman County has an injunction against protesters blocking municipal roads, and CN Rail has an injunction against protesters blocking the rail line. Despite these injunctions, the construction site is still occupied. Municipal roads have been dug up, CN Rail line has been disrupted, hydro stations compromised, and heavy construction equipment stolen. These actions also put our Ontario Provincial Police in a difficult position. As of November 18, 38 arrests have been made, 177 charges laid with minimal use of force. However, police, provincial, Order. 
Local officials cannot continue to manage the situation indefinitely in the absence of uh, federal leadership. This is incredibly frustrating. It's been going on now in 14 and a half years with respect to the Douglas Creek Estates subdivision. The Caledonia blockades are part of a national insurgence. Ontario has asked the federal government to intervene to bring this conflict to a peaceful resolution for all parties. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker. I'm going to try to speak fast. I rise today to talk about something that's very special and truly Canadian. Heritage Hockey Sticks has been making hockey sticks for elite and amateur athletes for more than 100 years here in Ontario. Just last week, it was announced that they are moving to the hometown of Canada's most famous hockey player, to the great city of Brantford, in my riding of Brantford Brant. The company traces its roots in Waterloo Region back to the 1880s. It's a complex family tree filled with amalgamations, name changes, and different owners such as the Seagram family, Cooper, and Nike Bauer. Production at the current Sheffield Street facility in Cambridge dates back to 1905. Heritage Hockey Sticks is now the exclusive supplier of wood hockey sticks for the Canadian Tire Corporation. The new 62,000-square-foot Brantford location is twice the size of the existing plant and allows for a production increase of about 300 per cent. Heritage Hockey Sticks owner Graham Rouston anticipates his workforce will grow to 100 people thanks to the new commitment from Canadian Tire. The company has outlived its domestic competitors. It is the only mass producer of wood, ABS, foam core, and hybrid composite sticks in Canada and the United States. According to the owner, the city of Brantford offered a welcoming business environment as well as a closer connection to Canadian hockey lineage as it is the birthplace of number 99 Wayne Gretzky and the home to his father and ambassador of the game, Walter Gretzky. Congratulations to Heritage Hockey Sticks. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning.